podcast to talk to us about uh, the fe- what the federal uh, government is doing. So I uh, it's certainly um, Mr. Polyevra is someone I'm I'm a big fan of because of he's been a champion for small business owners uh, for um, in in Canada and he's worked to uh, in order to get the, the federal government out of, out of our way. And uh, he's also a very hardworking politician. He's showed up at my door, you know, two or three times. And I uh, really appreciate the fact that he's out there working hard to, uh, you know, to help Canadians. And, but, but most importantly, to keep the government accountable uh, to, you know, increasing taxes and, uh, you know, to be punitive to, to small business owners. So it's my, uh, my honor and my pleasure to, uh, to introduce the Honorable uh, Pierre Polievra. Hi, everyone. I, I hope my mute button is off. Can you hear me all right? We're good. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much for including me on this, Paul. I appreciate all the work you're doing to bring together our entrepreneurs in the community so that you can have a united voice, share information, and uh, better uh, serve your customers and employ your, your workers. Uh, I know you're going through hell right now. Um, small businesses have been demolished over the last uh, month where their customers and workers have largely been locked down. Uh, So um, I believe that uh, the government needs to take dramatic action in order to combat the uh, incredible damage that small businesses have suffered. Uh, The simplest and easiest way to do that is to put cash back in the hands of small business owners. Um, So I'm gonna give you a very brief update of the decisions the government of Canada has made in that respect. Um, First of all, the the government has announced that it will institute a 75% wage subsidy. The terms and conditions are not yet entirely defined, nor is there a portal uh, set up for you to apply, but it will be be, uh, 75% of eligible wages retroactive to March 15th that will pay out uh, to April 15th. May 15th through to June 15th. So a full three month, 75% wage subsidy. I, as I said, the conditions and the terms and conditions are not yet public. I do believe there'll probably be some sort of cap on, uh, on the amount per employee uh, that can be covered. Uh, and I think it will only be small businesses who are eligible. That is to say businesses with less than 15, per $15 million of taxable income. Uh, sorry, taxable assets. Um, so uh, that's uh, something you'll have to look if, you're, if your business has more than $15 million of taxable a- assets, then you might not be eligible. But if you're a small business eligible for the small business tax deduction, you will. Uh, secondly, the government has announced that it will defer all HST um, remittances until the end of June. So if you were planning to, rem- if you're remitting monthly, uh, or quarterly, and you have any remittances that were scheduled uh, between now and then, they're all going to be deferred. So you can hold on to that cash a little bit longer. Um, so that, that will hopefully allow you to, to juggle uh, your short-term expenses, make your rent payments, uh, and, uh, and uh, deal with an incredibly difficult cash flow uh, situation. Uh, finally, the government is putting together an emergency loan. Uh, they're going to back Uh, uh, eligible financial institutions like the charter banks to loan you up to uh, $40,000 interest free. You, um, if you repay that money before December 31st, 2022, then you will be forgiven 10,000 of that $40,000. So again, you borrow the money. If you pay it back uh, between now and and 20, uh, the end of uh, 2020, uh, sorry, the end of 2022, then you will get 10,000 of it forgiven. So um, those are the major me- the measures the government has taken thus far uh, with respect to, to small businesses. Um, the Conservatives have pushed for a uh, rebate to small businesses of the GST that they've paid over the last six months. In other words, the preceding six months to the crisis. We think that might be a, one way to uh, get some cash in your hands. And we believe that we've advocated that that, uh, rebate be not a deferral or a loan, but just a a full refund. You've collected these taxes. Uh, You're in an extraordinary situation. You should just keep that money. Um, And we know that you'll use it wisely because, uh, frankly, uh, our small businesses are cash strapped right now. And uh, none of it will go to waste, uh, whether you spend it on 
uh, emergency rent, uh, utilities, uh, wages, uh, you decide. But uh, that is what we're advocating. I, I cannot tell you that it, it is going to happen, but uh, we will continue to push for it. Um, but, uh, you know, this is an incredible situation. We don't know when uh, the lockdown will end, but we do know that as long as your customers are locked up and your workers are locked up, you're not really doing much business, uh, even though uh, a lot of bills still keep coming in. So um, we're, we as conservatives are going to keep championing our, our small business entrepreneurs and uh, make sure that it's not just the, the fat cats, the big uh, multinational corporations that get assistance. They, they tend to be much more effective at getting money from government because they have powerful lobbying uh, activities uh, on Parliament Hill. Um, but uh, we have to remember that the everyday uh, ordinary small businesses that uh, employ the overwhelming majority of private sector workers, um, they, don't, they don't have the money to lobby or hire consultants, but they actually are the backbone of our economy and they need uh, our protection in these extraordinary times. So with, with that, I'll uh, turn it over to questions. And I think, Mike, I think you had a couple questions there. Yeah, well, one of the, just clear, just making sure I heard that right, because I'm always, uh, I don't know lots about uh, how all those laws and finances go very well, but you said if you can borrow up to 40K uh, for operating and that, and you only pay back 30K if uh, yeah. within, within the time period? Yes, so I'll read you the, right to, uh, directly from the Government of Canada website. Uh, and at, at the end of the call, I will give you um, my, my web, website, which will have all this information on it uh, as early as Monday. But uh, so you don't need to feel uh, the need to, to, to scribble notes furiously. But I'll read it here. The new Canada Emergency Business Account. Uh, we're launching a new Canada Emergency Business Account, a, a new loan program that will be implemented rapidly by eligible financial institutions in cooperation with the Export Development, uh, Export Development Canada. So in other words, uh, to, to, to translate that, I, I believe that what's going to happen is the major credit unions and the major charter banks will participate. They'll deliver it. So you'll, you'll be able to go to CIBC, TD, et cetera, and get one of these loans. They, they'll be backed by the government. So they will be interest-free loans of up to $40,000. Uh, small businesses and not-for-profits are eligible. Uh, and it's to help uh, their, cover their operating costs during the period where their revenues have been temporarily reduced. Now to qualify, uh, these organizations like small businesses will need to demonstrate they paid between 50,000 and a million dollars in total payroll in the year 2019. So if you paid 50,000 to a million in total payroll in 2019, you'd qualify. Repaying the balance of the loan on or before December 31st, 2022 will result in loan forgiveness of 25% or up to $10,000. So pay, so 50 K of, uh, of paying employees or is that 50 K of your remittances? That's payroll. That's, that's not your remittance. It says it, it okay, does yeah, not so say payroll, anything about yeah. remittances. It says and payroll. And so that wouldn't count for saying if you're hiring contractors or anything like that. I don't think that would be considered payroll. Um, yeah. That said, if you're paying yourself a salary as opposed to just dividends, that is considered payroll. Yeah, no, it's just like I asked a couple of the, uh, the guys I hire in town here. They're, they kind of run their, they're kind of not really employees because they run their own business. And then I just pay them uh, as kind of like subcontracting kind of thing. So those wouldn't count. So people who have more of a subcontractor sort of business wouldn't be eligible for that one or is there? No, but I, you know what, now that you mentioned it, I will raise that with the minister. So uh, I'll mm -hmm. put that forward and say, listen, uh, it says 50 grand of payroll, but if uh, someone uses uh, employees, uh, contractors instead of employees, could they get uh, the, the loan as well? Awesome. But I, 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 as of now, uh, I'm reading from the terms that are available <laughs> on the website, it says payroll. And to mm -hmm. me, that does not include contractors. It would make sense, right? Because if you had a contractors overseas, you know, you, you would probably want to keep it for payroll people you're paying here in Canada. So I could see that. Yeah. Right. But anyway, I will inquire because Thank there's you. a lot of, I mean, you, you, there are a lot of people who employ contractors exclusively and they do it with Canadian contractors. So uh, there's no reason why they should be excluded. That's true. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate that. 
So Pierre, I was just wondering, um, do you feel that we've prepared ourselves for this situation uh, as far as the government or, or are we kind of in a situation where we're using the government credit card to get us through this and it's basically going to, uh, it, you know, it's basically the taxpayers that are gonna have to pay this uh, for, for many years to come? Well, I, I uh, bring you back to uh, Aesop's uh, fable of the grasshopper and the ants. And of course, uh, when the sun was shining, uh, the grasshopper danced and played and sang songs and the ants stored away grains for the storm and the winter. And uh, the grasshopper laughed at the ants and said, uh, why are you guys always working? Uh, I'm out playing in the sunshine. They said, well, we're, we're preparing for the winter. And uh, when winter finally came, the grasshopper was starving and he went and knocked on the door of the ants and they said, what's wrong? Why, why don't you have any grains to eat? And he said, well, I was dancing and singing. And uh, they said, well, well, you were dancing and singing. We were saving grains. So now we're eating and you're not. Well, the same is true of our government. When times were good, they were running huge deficits and uh, building up massive debts instead of using the sunshiny days to store away savings for the storm. And now we, we've entered this, this in terrible situation already with a $30 billion deficit before the first case of COVID-19 was, was ever diagnosed in Canada. So we're, we're in a weak and vulnerable position. Uh, our cupboards are, are bare. We're going to have to run monstrous deficits now. Um, and of course, those deficits will come with, with uh, consequences down the road. Uh, unfortunately, it's unavoidable in times like these, you, you need to run deficits when uh, the economy is in full-scale collapse. But it would have been nice had we paid off debt and set aside money for this storm in the first place. And, and Pierre, how is your, uh, how's your family coping during this time? Because I know you're in a, sort of a bunker right now. Is that correct? I am, yes. I, I did show symptoms about, I'm going to say, 11 or 12 days ago. Uh, I then went to see a doctor about an unrelated matter, and he said the symptoms were such that I should get tested. And I have been tested, but it's been uh, now uh, nine days since I was tested, and I still have no results. So the, uh, they're, they're taking a lot of time to turn around the test results, and I'm checking daily. But I, I'm showing no serious symptoms, so I have every confidence that I'll get a clean bill of health. And how do you feel about this in general? Because it sounds like it looks like we got a big spike in Quebec. What do you do? You, do you think things are getting under control now or we still got ways to go? Well, I'm not an epidemiologist or a virologist, but um, it is uh, it's very unpredictable uh, what's going to happen. And maybe Goldie would have better information being at the provincial level, which is responsible for uh, for health care. But we still have an increase in cases almost uh, every single day. And um, we're um, hoping that the spread will stop um, as soon as possible. And uh, I understand that a major uh, drug company t announced yesterday, very late yesterday, that it has a new testing system that can give you an answer within five minutes as to whether you have uh, the disease. And if you do, then you can be isolated. Uh, if that uh, is true, then we might be able to get to, to start to isolate sol uh, solely those people who are either infected or who are vulnerable because of pre-existing pre conditions. And that might allow us to end the lockdown uh, in the weeks ahead. Uh, my view is that this cannot go on um, in the long run. We simply cannot shut down the entire workforce of an economy and continue to pay our bills for very long. Uh, eventually the money is just gonna run out.